Hey guys, how are you? Type A here. Uh, so yesterday or a couple of days ago, I was watching uh, the Net Rush tutorials on YouTube, how to make like glitchy drums and stuff like that. There's a lot of tutorials regarding like glitch music and breakcore and whatnot. So one of his main methods for making these types of sounds is to kind of like take a loop or and either use the um, the clips in a random way in Ableton to kind of like get different sequences or split up and uh, chops uh, the, the loop into into tiny pieces into the sampler and add kind of like different processing to to each one of the of the loops uh, basically by making uh, changes in the sampler so i kind of transposed the idea to be weak and added uh, like other processing and stuff to make it more of my own technique in a way uh, but I think the results are really cool and you can apply this to all kinds of loops because it's pretty much just copying, making changes and after that doing a bit of randomization. So uh, for this example I have this loop, it's super boring. And after the, the stuff I made it to sound something like this. Uh, yeah, and this is pretty much only Bayweek. The only thing I'm using just to make some processing is OTT, but there's no, you can get rid of OTT and it will be, uh, you know, like it will be different as well. So how can we go about making this? Because it looks like uh, there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's not a lot of stuff basically. So you have uh, the first sample chopped into into um, into different parts, and then you basically duplicate that and make changes. For instance, this one is reverse. Uh, this one is looping at twenty five percent. This one is looping at twenty five percent, but with a band pass uh, and some panning. And this one is basically automating this length here, and this one is gated. Basically, we're using an LFO to control the amplitude. And in his example in his channel, he makes a lot of changes, like not only the stuff, he makes like 14 copies of this and makes pitch variation and a lot of different shit that uh, the more you have, the more variation you can have in the to, into the loop so you can reuse it more in the track into different contexts. And you can add uh, post-processing to uh, make it blend more with the rest of your track. So let me find another loop, whatever, and let me try to uh, to kind of show you how you can start making stuff like this. So... Okay. Yeah, for instance, this uh, percussion sample, let me just put this one in in, uh, in the same tempo. So this one is 130, so I'm going to stretch um, 130 and that will automatically snap it to my to my grid lines here. So what I want to do now is bounce this one. And slice, you can either slice the drum machine and slice them to sample. Either way, you need to put uh, different versions of it in the instrument selector. So just for the sake of it, I'm going to use the same method, slice to multi-sample. And you want to uh, do it in regions or you want to do it by the onset. So I want to do it by the onset, um, 32 slices, uh, sounds like this. Uh, sorry. Pretty boring conga loop. Uh, so yeah, the idea is to start makes messing around. So the first step is to add the instrument selector here. Uh, and I want to rename this to oops to normal loop. So I know this one is the main one. Um, next step can be just as I show you. Um, duplicate this one, go here, and if you zoom to the to the different parts, 
you select all of them and you can add all this stuff at once. We can click reverse and now it sounds like this. It reverses all the, the different uh, single one shots uh, into reverse to read from the back, but keeping the the, the play the, the the same play head playback of the loop basically. Yeah, so you have some variation there, and you can rename this just to say organize reversed. And now you can duplicate this one again. And let's do kind of the same, like make it loop. You need to first select all of them. Select all of them and click here in loop. You can uh, basically do it only forward or doing like ping pong. I'm gonna do it only forward here. And then... It's better if you try to fine tune this, uh, so the the pitch of the of the looping is not too wild, too out of range, or something like that. I like twenty five. And now you're injecting like some life to this loop. Uh, so this one is. Normal loop 25%, and then we can uh, basically duplicate this one. Keep it the same, but then start adding messing around with uh, parameters and stuff. Like, for instance, I can add random modulation uh, to the panning, like free with 16 nodes, uh, make it uh, bipolar, uh, like this. We can tweak the, the looping in this one, like make it like shorter. Yeah, so let me clone this one again. And this one can be like a super tiny little loop, like uh, we can take, for instance, this. Um, um, we can take the, the loop length and make it like super, super short. So it's like almost granular. Yeah, so more or less you get the idea. Now what you want to do is maybe a macro to have a more fine tune control and automate the, the index of the of the different instruments here. So kind of like something like that. And now you can add a, a random modulator to if you just want to start to to, to this start basically like uh, circulating at random. You just now have this one. So pretty much make it in sync with I don't know like eighth notes. Um, uh, then what I want to do is to write like a button here and set this. Um, the destination to zero and map this to 100%. So you can either um, uh, automate this one on the timeline to get more fine tune control. So it's not everything at random and you can kind of predict when the change is going to happen. Or uh, in different parts, uh, if you're like uncertain of what you want to, to make it sound, you can uh, just automate the, the on off uh, of the range here and kind of like. Yeah, so that's the main idea of this technique. And of course, you can expand on this. Uh, you see here that we barely use any outbar effects, but uh, you can do as many slices of this as you want and add. Um, Processing to the individual like instruments, like make it like filter bandpass, or make one of the of the instruments super compressed, so it kind of changes the character a little bit of the loop, 
uh, and there's a lot of ideas and we pretty much kept it all big wig and it already sounds cool. Uh, there's definitely more that you can do with this stuff. So yeah, hope this is uh, interesting to you guys. Um, just leave some comments if you want to see more videos like this, I guess. I'm kind of like uh, trying to do something different from what the rest of the other um, big wee YouTubers are doing basically. Polari is doing some crazy stuff with the grid. Uh, so as other people making sequencers and super weird ideas for synthesis and stuff like that. And I don't want to repeat myself over what they are doing because they are doing a, they are doing already an extremely great job. But yeah, so I'm basically trying to get as much techniques as possible to make uh, arrangement and sparkling ideas kind of like uh, faster or more interesting, I guess. So yeah, bye.